Republicans who want to extend all the Bush tax cuts and even the Democrats who just want to extend them for income under a quarter million a year say the economy needs the lower tax rates to recover. And in fact, when the first Bush tax cuts were passed in 2001, that's exactly what President Bush said. The economy would benefit from having the lower tax rates. But in our fourth story tonight, for the first time, America and the history Mr. Bush so often refers to as his ultimate judge can see for themselves the full extent of the Bush economy. In a countdown exclusive, we've been given access to a story appearing online tonight at tax.com, authored by a friend of this show, Pulitzer Prize winning tax reporter David K. Johnston, who joins us presently. His story, the first look at a full economic data set from 2008, the portrait of the Bush economy, is now complete. In 2001, when President Bush passed the first of his package of tax cuts, tax cuts valued then at more than $1 trillion, he talked about how they would help to grow an economy that was then in recession. My plan is good for the long-term health of our economy. It is good for the businesses that create jobs. This tax relief helps all taxpayers. It especially helps those at the low end of the economic ladder. It helps American workers by letting them keep more money. In the, and it helps small businesses so that family-owned restaurants and startup software companies can hire more workers and provide more jobs for Americans. Helps American workers, helps small businesses, provide more jobs. Nine hard years later, the verdict is in. The average American taxpayer made less adjusted for inflation in 2008 than in 2000. The average income in 2000 was more than $61,000. In 2008, after the Bush tax cuts had several years to help American workers, $58,000. In only two years during the Bush administration, at the height of the housing boom, 2006 and 2007, did Americans make more than they did in the last year of the Clinton administration. How much more? 500 bucks more in 2006, 1,500 bucks more in 2007. Those gains more than wiped out after the housing bubble burst thereafter. And who benefited from those short-lived gains? American workers, small businesses? Johnston calculates that 30% of the gains made in 2007 went to those making a million or more a year. All told, Americans took home $2.74 trillion less during the Bush years than they would have if salaries had stayed stuck where Clinton left them. On an individual level, if the average American's wages adjusting for inflation stayed exactly where Bill Clinton left them, they would have made almost $50 more a week, $21,000 more over the whole eight years. And the kicker, Republicans claim the tax cuts pay for themselves by boosting the economy so much that even at lower rates, more money gets paid in taxes. Except that Washington took, took in less money in 2008 than it did in 2000. Just over a trillion dollars in 2008 from what had been a trillion point two in 2000. Maybe it's because under Bush, the number of people who made more than 200,000 a year and paid no taxes at all increased almost tenfold. Or maybe it's just because Mr. Bush's original rationale for the tax cuts was that he wanted the American government to have less money, no matter how much it hurt the American people. I don't believe like the vice president does in, in huge government. I believe in limited government. And by having a limited government and a focused government, we can send some of the money back to the people who pay the bills. I want to have a tax relief for all people who pay the bills in America, because I think you can spend your money more wisely than the federal government can. On his promise, let's bring in Pulitzer Prize winning tax reporter David K. Johnson, professor at Syracuse University's Law School, the author of Free Lunch and a columnist for Tax Notes. David, good evening. Thanks again for your time. Good evening, Keith. We're being told now that uh, extending these tax cuts will translate into jobs next year. We were told in 2001 that these tax cuts would create jobs and increase wages. What happened? Well, the policy failed if you just look at the data and the numbers, and you, uh, the, it's unmistakable what happened. Uh, during the eight years of the Bush administration, there were only 3.5 million jobs created. That's the same number created in the eight years of the Eisenhower administration, when we had a lot smaller population. Population grew faster than jobs. And people's incomes went down. I mean, people are getting 94 cents on the dollar in real terms for what they got in the year 2000. So clearly, this didn't work. But uh, even if the job creation promise failed and income did not go up and that promise failed, were not people at least better off because, as Mr. Bush liked to say, they got to keep more of their own money? Well, 
there are two groups of people principally who were better off because of this. One of them is parents who pay taxes, they make enough money to pay taxes, who have children under the age of 16 and are not under the alternative minimum tax which generally means make less than $100,000. They were beneficiaries because the Republicans championed a $1,000 per child tax credit. But one out of every $8 of the tax savings went to the one in 1,000 Americans in the top hundredth of 1%. Those are people who make between about $2 million a year and several billion dollars a year. They got one-eighth of the tax cuts. Uh, so clearly the way this was distributed was incredibly focused on helping a narrow group of people at the very top. Let me apply to uh, retroactively to the Bush administration that which the Obama administration has requested in terms of its handling of the economy. In fairness, lots of things happened during the Bush administration aside from taxes going down. How do we know the Bush tax cuts did not keep things from getting worse? Keith, that's a very good and fair question to ask. So here's what I did. President Bush had two rounds of tax cuts, 2001 for individuals, and then 2003, the one he said was really important to stimulating the economy. We reduced taxes on capital gains and most dividends by a quarter. So what happened? Well, if you just analyze the five years from 2003 to 2007, the peak year, you throw out the other years in the economy, mm -hmm. the results are still awful. Americans made almost a trillion dollars less income than if we had stayed at the income levels of 2000. So the last point leads back to today. Why exactly is there any debate over whether the richest people in America should pay 35% or 39% on their income above a quarter of a million when so many of them don't seem to be paying any percent on any taxes at all? Keith, there are a lot of people with large incomes who have a very responsible view of the welfare of the country. Unfortunately, there is a group of people who are determined to cut their taxes. And at the top, you could benefit if you made $100 million a year. You are saving somewhere between close to $5 million and close to $25 million a year in taxes mm. under the Bush policy. Those people who don't care about the country but about themselves are willing clearly to spend a lot of money in private meetings held on Capitol Hill with those politicians they give campaign donations to, to get their way. These are what I call the political donor class and they're willing to distort the truth and anything else so that they personally can gain and all the rest of us can take the burdens. The column is available at tax.com. David K. Johnson, columnist at Tax Notes. Thank you for sharing what you have, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you, Keith.